Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to the channel. Well, today has been a very productive day for me. Um, got a lot of little tedious stuff knocked off the list as far as getting the uh, second gen up and running. Um, had a dentist appointment this morning, dog or vet this afternoon, so I was off work all day long. And in between those two, I was able to uh, knock a lot of parts out for the second gen. We did get the uh, valve lash all set, uh, 10 and 20. Um, 10 on the intake, 20 on the exhaust. Uh, you do six of them uh, at top dead center. Do the other six at top or at bottom dead center. Um, I do have a video on there if you guys want to check it out. I just went ahead and, and there's countless other videos. Um, it's uh, relatively easy to take care of. And there's a hundred different videos on eBay or on eBay. Oh my goodness. On uh, YouTube to show you how to take care of that. So uh, I think the black lines look pretty good. Uh, contrasting on top of the, uh, the red intake plenum cover. I uh, got the blue top steering box on you guys have not checked out blue top. I would suggest that you do uh, It's a great alternative to red top and They're just as good if not better than red top and just a little bit cheaper So you guys get a chance check out red top steering boxes or I'm sorry blue top steering boxes and uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised on price and the uh, quality of workmanship Harmonic balancer, give that a little bit of fresh paint job and put that on there. Turbo is on. Um, looking forward to trying this uh, two-stage compressor wheel. Um, you can see the dual fin in there. So I've never tried one of these before. So really looking forward to trying that. Um, manifold, basically everything is ready to go uh, to do a, uh, a first fire on this engine. Uh, let it get up to temperature and then do a hot retorque on the head. So. Um, what we're going to work on today is actually getting the air dog installed. So I have done these before. Um, this is the only lift pump that will ever be on any of my trucks. Um, it, it's personal preference and it's personal preference because of, if I can spit it out and talk plainly, it's personal preference because of customer service and the quality of the product. Customer service is second to none. They answer all calls. Uh, they answer all questions, they take care of all their problems, and they do it with kindness. Um, I've talked to the guys at FAST a couple of times on the phone, and I've talked to the guys at FAST over PRI, and uh, I'm sorry, they just weren't very nice to talk to. So, uh, irregardless, you know, it comes down to personal preference. Air dog is just what I prefer. It just is just what I prefer. So I've done this before several times actually. Um, the last one that we did on the channel was on the third gen dually. Um, difference being is I'm not going to be using their uh, upgraded draw straw. I'm going to be using a sump that is already installed on the second gen. Uh, so it'll be just a little bit different installation. Don't have to go through pulling the uh, the uh, pump and everything out of the uh, tank and taking care of all that stuff. Uh, everything is already taken care of. Just got to run some lines and uh, go from there. So you want to stay tuned for tomorrow's video. I have an exciting, exciting announcement coming. We do have another channel project um, and I'm excited for this one. This one is so flipping cool. It's actually sitting right here behind me. So, or I'm sorry, behind me? No, sorry, in front of me, right there. Uh, it's staring at me in the face, but yeah, it, it is a very, very cool uh, uh, channel project. I'm excited to have it on the channel. So, uh, with that being said, let's get this unboxed and see what all is in here. All right, this is the Air Dog 2 4G. That is a 165 pump. Um, in this, you will receive. You got your instructions. Um, like I said last time, kind of looks like my truck on the cover. Now, this is Michael Asher's truck. He is on Instagram. Give him a follow on Instagram. Uh, he's got a nice, 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 nice second gen. So. Uh, they send you all the fuel line that you need, take care of it, you get some zip ties, complete wiring harness from pump to battery to the plug on the uh, engine harness. You got some sandwich brackets for mounting. You got a box of goodies here which contains your standoff for the frame, your hardware, all your fittings that you need. Get some extra O-rings in case you'd ever had any issues. And then you have the pump bracket itself. Then the only other thing left in the box is the pump itself. So we'll get ready to get this assembled and uh, get it put on the truck. 
All right, like I said, we've got just a little bit of pre-assembly to do, um, but before we do that, I wanted to show you a couple of things. Um, as far as your sandwich plate, uh, you wanna make sure and predetermine where you want to have uh, that mounted at, whether it's in the lowest setting or the highest setting, uh, where you want to go with that, um, because this perch sit, or that little standoff sits there on the sandwich plate. That goes there, and then your pump assembly sits on top right here. And then this other plate goes on the back side of your frame, and then you, this, that's why it's called a sandwich plate. You sandwich your frame in between this plate and this plate using these four inch bolts here. So uh, we need to go over to the truck, uh, kind of find a place that we're going to put it, and uh, make a decision there. One of the main things you're gonna wanna do is fill out your warranty card and get that sent in so you don't have any issues if you would have any troubles with this. Uh, to start out, I'm, like I said, I'm gonna start my lowest position. You got some tapered bolts, tapered headed bolts. Put those in there. All right, with that done, you can take your pump and set on there. All right, when putting that on there, it is a lot easier to take the filters off. I just wanted to try it with the filters on and as you saw it can be done uh, as far as this goes this is pretty much ready we're going to go ahead and put our fittings in the pump now um, when you do this you want to be careful that you don't break anything you have uh, your feed to the pump you got your feed to the engine and then you have your return back to the tank so um, this is 120, these two are 120 inch pounds, and this one here is 60 inch pounds. Just make sure to take great care when you put these on, not to over tighten them because you will break them. All right, like I said, your return is just 60 inch pounds, and that's a 5 8 Don't want to over tighten it. And then your engine feed and your pump feed from the tank are both 120 inch pounds. with that this is ready to go on a truck now um, like I said these don't need to be over tightened they're an o-ring fitting um, so just the return 60 your feeds are uh, 120 and those are inch pounds um, they do have uh, foot pounds in here also for you uh, one is five foot pounds and the other one is ten foot pounds so uh, we'll go ahead and get this put in the truck and then start running some line Pump in place. Now we can start running some fuel lines. 
Uh, I did go back here and turn my sump just a little bit because it was going straight out. Uh, I turned it towards the front of the truck a little bit so you got a nice even line all the way up to the lift pump right here. So uh, we need to get uh, some lines ran and uh, also get the fitting put on the VP44 up there. For your VP, it's not an O-ring fitting. It has a crush washer and uh, just tighten it up tight too, just snug. It doesn't have to be muscled in either. That's a little dab will do you. All right, for my application, I'm gonna use uh, these two 90s. This is my return. So that'll go on there and then loop back around and go back to the tank. And this will be my feed from the pump into my VP. Uh, it'll come out of the side of the VP with a 90 and have just a nice feed line going down to the frame and on back to the lift pump itself. And then I'll have uh, a feed from the tank and then this will be the to my VP. So I'm only gonna be using these four fittings. Uh, these two will be saved for whatever I might need them for. When putting these together, it is kind of hard, kind of difficult to put these in. Um, I'll put something on here to lubricate this a little bit. You can also heat the end of this if you want to, uh, just to make it just a little bit soft and that helps aid in pushing the, uh, the hose on. You've got this nice solid surface. Hopefully it'll help us out here. All right, it is the next day. Ran out of daylight, so I didn't do much anything else after I put this fitting on. I really didn't do anything else except go in the house. Um, so I got this fitting on here so we can get under the truck and start running some fuel lines. And then the last thing I'll do is run the wiring harness. So uh, the first connection we're gonna make is go from the uh, pump to the sump. All right, like I said, we're gonna make this connection first and this is the fuel in connection from your tank. So that's gonna go from here and then run along the frame rail and then go into my sump right there. So we'll go ahead and take that first fitting that I put in and all you do is click it in place just like that. All right, I have the pump return fitting on and then I have it routed around the back side of the air dog. And then I ran it up through the body of mounts, up into here. And then I gotta go on top of the tank, cut it to length, and put it right there in that return. Fun times. All right, the last connection I need to make down here as far as hoses is to the feed to the VP. And that will be right here. I forgot that you need to put this feed on first. That's one thing you wanna make sure and do. Put this feed on first, because it goes back further. And then put your return on. Just like that. You can see how the feed passes the return. If you don't do that first, uh, you won't be able to get your feed on. So to get them off, all you do is press these two gray buttons and they come right off just like that. Okay, now I need to make a decision on what fitting to use right here at the VP. I was gonna use a 90, um, but the more I look at it, I think I'm gonna use a straight that I have left over. They give you enough fittings um, to mount this inside or on the outside of the frame rail, whichever you so choose. Um, but the way I see in it, since your VP sits at an angle this way, and if you put that 90 on there, it's gonna be pointing down towards uh, the inside of the engine. So if I put a straight fitting on there, like that, I think it's a little bit better flow uh, coming up off the frame rail into the VP itself. So uh, up here, I'm going to go ahead and use a straight. If I had a 45, it would probably be just a little bit better. It'd actually make it a 90 because the pump sits just about on a 45 degree angle. And then if your fitting was a 45, then 45 and 45 is 90. But uh, the way I'm looking at it, the um, this, this straight is going to be a lot better. All right, the last thing we need to do is the wiring harness. Um, these two leads right here, 
I do not use. I'm going to show you how to take these out of this harness. Uh, what these are is a low pressure indicator lead. Um, put that in there for a sensor. This goes up for an LED on your dash or of some sort. Um, I don't use them, so I strip them out of the harness. It's just one less thing that uh, I have to worry about tying up. So to get it out of your harness, untape it, and then you can grab, pull it out just a little bit. It would have been easier to cut that tape off, but I don't want to take a chance of cutting one of the wires. So uh, it takes just a little bit more time, but just as effective to go ahead and just pull the tape off. And then right here, these grounds run together, so you're gonna to wanna to cut this wire right here. Make sure not to cut this wire, because that's where your pump ground is. So just cut this one only. Like I said, just make sure and cut the right one. Now this one here, since everything is in a coating, uh, I feel pretty comfortable just cutting this tape. All right, and the last wire you're gonna wanna cut is this orange one right here. And then that takes the low pressure indicator out of the harness. Now we just gotta go through and uh, tape everything back up. All right, I got everything taped back up. Um, like I said, I deleted the uh, low pressure indicator uh, that you can run. I never run those because I run a gauge. Um, and then taped everything back up after I made a couple of cuts inside the harness. Now we're ready to go put this in. All right, I have my wires or my wiring harness laying in there, kind of where everything goes. This is my battery leads right here. I put my relay right there where my slave cylinder was for the clutch. Uh, you just utilize a hole that was there. I have everything kind of draped and wrapped around kind of where it goes. That's for the factory lift pump plug. Um, like I said, this is, I ran the battery there. And then this is the wire that runs back to the lift pump itself. I need to kind of route it down and through. And then that pretty much takes care of the install. I do have the VP feed right here. Um, because I want to purge all these lines and actually if there's anything in there where I was routing the lines It'll blow all that uh, crap out of there and before I plug it into the VP and don't put that dirt inside the pump All right, I guess with that that's pretty much going to take care of it um, I don't have any diesel fuel the battery's dead and There's no flywheel or starter in there. So i um, gonna have to take care of those items before I even worry about purging it um yeah, so uh, I did go ahead and I made the connection right there for the uh, factory lift plump plug. And then I brought the wire over and just zip tied it to the uh, fuel line itself. I just got my battery connections coiled up there for when I get my battery in. And I do have the connection made down below at the lift pump. So everything is completely taken care of. The only thing we need to do, like I said, is purge that, get any in dirt or any debris out of that hose that might be in there and uh before i plug it into the uh, vp so um one thing you do want to do before you plug things in you want to make sure and get yourself some dielectric grease and uh put on those plugs especially the ones that are down underneath the truck um it's just a good practice on any of the plugs and anytime you unplug them uh, before you plug them back in put some dielectric grease on there uh, it keeps cr uh, crud and corrosion out especially if you're in the northern states like i am uh, in ohio we use salt and brine in the winter time so it just keeps all that crap out of there so i guess with that being said that's pretty much all i have for today so if you don't mind hit that like button give me a thumbs up Subscribe if you have not already done so and don't forget to watch tomorrow's video um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be up tomorrow uh, because to see the new channel project I am so stoked to show you guys this channel project. So anyway guys like I said Like subscribe. We'll talk to you guys later on